any available committee or a committee which is to be constituted uh, has to have teeth. There is no other way. And also uh, uh, about assessments, I think that's, that's an ecological point, but I think that's a very important point th to have a very sound assessment, ecological, um, and well, I shouldn't call it economic, but a very sound ecological assessment of the region. Uh, and this has to happen with the participation of the community. For example, in Kathani Basin, the Dhivars and the Gonds knew the river's fishes and they knew the names and their assessment was much stronger. They even knew which are the ecologically critical spots in that basin. You are, if, I mean, uh, so this sort of community assessment before any project coming up is also very relevant. Uh, yes, that reminds me, you know, fighting against the nuclear power plants, not only in Kaiga when we are fighting. In Japan, uh, they fought with saying, say it with flowers, which means the nuclear radiation, they, it would reflect in the flower itself. That is a kind of indication. So similarly, what he was pointing out, Himanshu, uh, is that, you know, can we have that kind of saying it with fishes? It's a very very good idea to show the indicators of, of the living rivers itself. But coming back to the overall broader picture, which uh, IRG has always been saying that, you know, like forest, Indian Forest Act, Forest Conservation Act 1980, lot of controversies, in whatever it is, it has been able to save the forests, remaining forests. CRZ, Coastal Regulation, I know lot of problem, lot of encroachment, but still, has contributed in whatever trying to retrieve the fragile coastal rivers. But not the new amended act. No, no, what is the earlier one? But new amended act is by, you know, commercial orientation. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm just wondering, I, it's a loud thought, whether can we have something on the rivers? You know, because they, they are the lifeline. This is what Rajendra Singh has been talking about. Yeah. He has come out with uh, a national river policy. Yeah. And he's been holding meetings all over the place. And I think he has also sent it to the Ministry of Water Resources. I have given an alternative national water policy. But his point is a national water policy is not enough. You also separately need a national river policy. So he's formulated something. Discussion is going on. I don't know what will come of it. Maybe. I mean, that is in one way out. That is what I feel. But I think policy is a, is a, a document of intent. Yes. If not really going to help, it's not no, policies then can be followed up. The first step, the first step. Yes. Um, <coughs> taking on from what Mr. Himanshu said about instituting some legal framework, etc., and the example that he's giving is that he talked to the secretary and he said, no, we don't take it into account. Can we bring in the element of culpability? of either ignorance or inefficiency or negligence mm -hmm. on the part of the authorities who finally sanction these uh, projects. That is uh, a suggestion. Uh, though I am aware it's not a forum for debate, I just was tempted to make this. <laughs> I was tempted to make one point and then you brought in the other point. Now, you know, the, like I was talking about this mental mapping, this whole notion of cost-benefit analysis, this has become a kind of a, a sort of a, a forum in which the government and the activists can talk to each other on some kind of even footing. But this is the question I'm raising. Does the cost-benefit analysis help us at all? Or does it sort of marginalize us further? This whole notion, this conceptual framework of cost-benefit analysis. Just to sort of uh, take an anecdotal example, the G.D. Agrawal, when he put up his fight, he say we i will not talk about cost benefit analysis i am fighting on the basis of my faith because he more than any other person realized that cost benefit analysis doesn't help us at all so this is the kind of poser we need to put on the people who are determining the rules of the game that cost benefit analysis is not the rules of game which helps the ecological uh, you know uh, thing again on the national river policy uh, put forward by jalpurish rajendra singh ji i would appeal to you and everybody please read that river policy is it already policy or is it written by the ministry itself? Sorry to say that, but uh, that's that. I, ha I had real hard feelings when I read that draft. I wrote to him, and he is not here, so I shouldn't say. But there is no reply. So, so we have to take this very seriously because he is the big name uh, in the country today on the water issue, and that policy is is no policy at all. Sorry. Thank you. Ah, I'm glad Surinder has come back. 
No, I thought you had left. Don't you want to join the debate? Uh, I, you know, the, uh, the presentation which are going on for in, in this series are very, very interesting, very informative, uh, and sometimes very exciting also. But I think most of what is being said is rather kind of predictable. We know that this is how neighbors are being treated for last so many years. Now the problem is what is the problem and what is the solution? And what can we propose through the series of dialogues or maybe the book that you're finally coming up with? My contention here is that economics is the driver of change. And that is the reason why the rivers are polluted because the economics drives us to continue to do what we're doing to the rivers. Now can we, although I'm not very uh, I'm not a very advocate of the ecosystem services principle, but I'm saying if economics is what is the overriding concern for us, can we counter it with economics of other kind? Can the rivers be ecologically evaluated? And we say that if you pollute a river and you say, okay, West Coast paper mill or any industry is generating this much of revenue, so the pollution is not, is you know, Let's not count it because the revenue we're generating is of that quantity. Can we say that the river, the ecosystem services that river generates or provides of various kinds is of this much economic value? And then we compare those economic values. Some Will that be prudent? Will that be a system? Will that be a one argument? So that's, I am just thinking loud. Maybe I'm uh, just posing as an as a option. Maybe it's, once you start valuing uh, the waters or the ecosystem, then there are other implications of that as well. I am aware of that. Yes. But yet to put the argument up and say, okay, if economics has to compare, let's put the other economics, which is ecological economics, and let's see how it works. So that's, you know, one proposition I have in mind, which Pandu has been always raising, how to do it. C could that be an answer? Uh, yeah, well, actually, the, the entire uh, gamut of cost-benefit analysis and also ecological economics it's, it's very evident that it's needed, definitely. We can't uh, circumvent it, but it's also a very dangerous ground, like you said. Uh, because, for example, like I told, in, in Shastri Basin, around 10,000 livelihoods, 12,000 livelihoods depend on the river. If you actually calculate the economic costs of the livelihood dependency, it will be very low. And that is a problem. That, 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 that can be a problem. So, but that said, even then, uh, 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 we, cannot, uh, we, we cannot shy away from a cost-benefit analysis. That is something that we have to do. Because it is just not fair not to account for the costs and only look at benefits. That's just not the way of the game. So we will have to account it, but we need to be extremely careful. And uh, uh, unfortunately, ecological economics is just an emerging thing in India. And how do we account for livelihoods and how do we give them a standing which, uh, uh, even when the goods are not coming into the market, is a very tricky thing. Uh, you know, Bedti, which we fought uh, since 30 years back, one of the aspects was cost-benefit, which helped us, I mean, in addition to people's movement. But uh, I would totally agree that, you know, then you are playing the, uh, the rules which is set by the opposition, and that is a very big problem. Uh, so I, I, I don't think we have a kind of uh, black and white answer to that. We might have to use, but still be careful about it. But I think, Raghavendri, what you said of, uh, you know, watershed and its impact is, is very important also, not only from the point of the rivers, but uh, where, uh, you know, we, we think that watershed, I mean, the amount of money which has been poured into watershed in India, and, uh, you know, no questions being raised at all of how it is killing the lakes or the rivers. I think it's a very important point which we need to address also. just wanted to add a very small point in the ecological uh, uh, economics thing. For example, uh, Panduji just mentioned Aganashini. And Aganashini River was studied by IISC, and they actually calculated the economic valuation of the bivalves, which are the muscles uh, of the river. And only the bivalves contribute to around 100 million to around 300 million rupees to the local population. And this is just the bivalves of the creek. We are not counting the fish and we're not counting that economy. So yes, definitely these are. Now just look at this sort of study. Maybe it has underestimated the economic valuation, but this study is definitely going to help Aganashini if there is a dam coming up. So they have their limited but very interesting and important uses. So. <laughs>